Welcome to Jiri Snacks, snackable episodes about the Jiri exam and graduate school admissions. I'm Tyler, founder of Achievable, and we have a Jiri course that is affordable and includes everything you need to ace your Jiri. A full textbook, tons of Jiri questions that are backed by a memory enhancing algorithm, and a full length of many full length practice exams. You can try it out for free at achievable.me, and if you like it, the code podcast gets you 10% off. Now, today we have Clay Daniel on the line with us again. Um, he's a regular guest of the show, and I love his question walkthroughs. We're going to be doing some GRE verbal walkthroughs today, but before that, uh, if you just want to give a quick bit of background about you and about uh, your company, Clayborne. You bet. Thanks for having me again, Tyler. It's uh, really fun to be here. I started uh, Clayborne Test Prep and Tutoring about 13 years ago and have been doing GRE prep uh, since then and tutor other standardized tests as well. But I'm particularly excited about this episode because I'm kind of a word nerd and uh, today's mm. practice questions that we're going to be talking about have a lot to do with vocabulary and um, <laughs> everyone's favorite part of the GRE. <laughs> yeah, probably, uh, probably I'm in the minority in, in, in that sense, but i um, trying to figure out what a word might mean if I've never seen it before in context or, or just dealing with kind of weird words. Um, that's, that's where we're going tonight, and I'm excited to do it. Awesome. Well, yeah, why don't you kick us off with the first one then? Um, and just so you guys know, kind of following along, um, in the past, we've tried to go off of uh, like a publicly available PDF, uh, but these are from ETS's Power Prep. And so this is, you can get two ETS official Power Prep GRE practice exams for free by going to ETS's website and signing up for an account. I think it's a free, just like a free sign up. And um, basically, you know, it's one of the best resources that exists for the GRE. And it's certainly one of the most accurate when it comes to the real language of the real exam. So highly recommend you do that if you have not yet done so. Um, but that also means that the way that you're gonna get to kind of follow along here is not by a PDF, but just by listening. Um, so yeah, take it away, Clay. Today's focus is, is sentence equivalence questions. So if you have any familiarity with the GRE, you may be aware that there are actually two different kinds of vocabulary-based questions on the verbal sections. Uh, text completion involves filling in the blank, one, two, or three blanks, but sentence equivalence also has a sentence with a blank, but has the, the innovation or the novelty that there are actually two right answers and those two right answers not only must correctly fill in the blank, but also be synonyms of each other. So mm. it, it's an interesting kind of twist on typical sentence completion questions. And I want to mention before we dive into the first one that it's it's a very there's a common structure to the six answer choices. It's not universal, but what you'll often see is that there are, of course, the two correct answers, which are synonymous but also plug in correctly and make sense in the sentence. But then there's often another pair of synonyms, two mm -hmm. wrong answers that are synonymous with each other, but don't fit in the sentence. And then often the last two are not synonymous with each other. They, they kind of are outliers. Like one of them might fit in, right? But not both. Yeah. If you're positive that a certain choice doesn't have a synonym at all, it can't possibly be one of the right answers. It, it can kind of be cast aside mm -hmm. on the basis of that recognition. So with that in mind, let's, let's dive into a few of these. Um, they're, they're typically just, just the one sentence. So I'll read the first one here, just saying blank where that's given. It says, the spy's repeated bungling was, above all else, blank those who wished to thwart her efforts since it was so unpredictable as to obscure any pattern that might otherwise lead to her capture. Hmm. Now, if you heard that and thought, that doesn't even really make sense to have a blank there, you're, you're not wrong if you're thinking about only one word. It, it wouldn't really make sense to plug in just one word there. And so when I talk about the answers, you'll hear what sometimes is true, that there's actually multiple words in the answer. But just to repeat kind of part of the sentence again, we're talking about the spies bungling and it was blank, those who wished to thwart her efforts. Mm -hmm. Now, so far, if we just kind of stop there, 
it really could be two completely opposite directions. It's either helping those who want to thwart her or it's hurting those who want to thwart her, right? Those are probably the two choices, wouldn't you say? Yeah. (laughs) So it's very important to pick up all the context clues on these sentences. It goes on to say it was so unpredictable as to obscure any pattern that might otherwise lead to her capture. Right, which to me, then I started thinking, oh, this is hurting their ability to thwart her, but you never know. You should always keep your options open. You want to be flexible, but it's great what you said there, Tyler, because you really do want to make a prediction on these choices. It's, okay. And in fact, it's, it's a good exercise to even put your hand in front of the screen and cover up the wrong answers for the moment and think about which way is this going? Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be a fancy GRE word or anything like that. Like hurting is, is perfectly fine. It it says that it was above all else blank. So it was some kind of hurting thing, some kind of, you might say hindering, which actually turns out to be one of the, one of the right answers says a hindrance to. So notice Mm -hmm. that the right answer has, has three words in it because it kind of has to work with the syntax of the sentence it was a hindrance to those who wished to thwart her efforts. So I'll read the others and, and listeners can think about what the other right answer might be. An obstacle to, a signal to, an indication for, a snare for, a boon to. Mm-hmm. So if you heard those, the, an obstacle to might have jumped out at you, but there's also a snare for which seems to be kind of a negative, hurtful, hindering thing as well. Um, We can probably rule out the others. Now, sometimes you're going to encounter difficult vocabulary like the word boon, B-O-O-N, in the last choice. Not not a word that we use maybe in everyday language. Yeah, I just am lucky that I played an old Western video game somewhat recently, so I've heard that before, but it's pretty old. Well, I like to relate it to bane, which is kind of its opposite, right? A boon is a blessing and a bane is a curse. And then you can think about... Right. Bane of my existence. Bane of my existence or the Dark Knight Rises. You know, the villain is bane. So bane is a bad thing, but boon is a good thing. To boon is a good thing. It certainly wasn't a boon to those who wish to thwart her efforts. But also, even if you weren't totally sure of that, it doesn't appear to have a, a synonym there. And something like an indication for or a signal to is just kind of bland and neutral. It doesn't really get into the sentence. Mm -hmm. So a hindrance to sounds good. An obstacle to or a snare for are close, but you really want to think about synonym to hindrance. Mm -hmm. That's pointing toward obstacle um, just because they're, they're so close together. You know, a snare is more like a trap. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a different idea, even though it's also negative. Um, So sometimes you have to get into that nuance and say, I'm going to start by looking for positive answers versus negative answers, right? What we call Mm -hmm. connotation. But then once we're in the realm of the negative answers we want there, you sometimes need to get a little more specific in the way you evaluate them. Right. Yeah, it does. Great. All right. Um, So let's try another one here. This is another one where where the answer choices uh, have multiple words that kind of have a little preposition in there. So when you first read it, it almost seems hard to understand the grammar or syntax. So you kind of have to stick with it. It says, although the film is rightly judged imperfect by most of today's critics, the films being created today are blank it since its release in 1940 provoked sufficient critical discussion to enhance the intellectual respectability of cinema considerably. Interesting. Yeah. The, the, the prediction that jumps up to me immediately is beholden to it or like grateful for it or better off because of it or something like that. Cause you're essentially it's because of that second sentence where it's just like, you know, movies today owe a lot to whatever this movie was. Yeah. That's great. I, you really picked up a lot in hearing it, and you and you were right to pick up the the sense evidence is more important. Um, now, contrast words, you know, although the film is rightly judged imperfect, we do want to pay careful attention to contrast, but 
-hmm. that part doesn't turn out to be as central to the sentence, right? You, you emphasize the key part. Um, yeah, it's imperfect, but the, the right answer does appear to be positive and you nailed it, Tyler. Beholden to is actually one of the choices. Oh, great. Hey, (laughs) got one. Pretty great. When that happens, I'll, I'll read the others indebted to derivative of based on distinguishable from biased against mm. we can probably toss out that last one right way too too negative if you yeah, can, yeah. notice how much we can get from just positive versus negative that there's so much in that that leads to right answers i want to focus on the two middle choices because i think they represent two synonyms here derivative of based on mm-hmm. I have definitely seen ch- students pick those two choices because mm-hmm. they're synonyms and they seem to be showing that modern films are kind of coming out of this older film. Right. Isn't that close to the idea? You know, it, like it's sort of in the right close, area, yeah. but not, not quite right, not beholden to, as you said, which indebted to would then be the one that, that lines up to it. But I like that yeah. question because there's there's that other synonym pair, I think, is very, very tricky. Yeah, it's 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 a compelling second one for sure. Great. Should we do one more? Yeah, let's do a third one. This is a good one to introduce some more kind of classic GRE vocabulary. You're just in these choices, Great. you're going to hear more of the kind of words that you know, you know, de- desiccant or something, just like stuff that stuff that people just never use in real life. Yeah, lugubrious is one of my favorites. And really sad, but yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I haven't heard that one. But yeah, if you're if you're listening and English is not your first language, um, yeah, we're, sorry, it's not your fault. This this test is doing this to everybody, including the people who have spoke English their whole life. Right. They they may not have spoken um, these words, so, so maybe that's some comfort yeah. um, in, in that sense. That it, it you kind of need to study vocabulary. That's that's a separate but important point. Um, but we can talk about some of the words and at least other ways that we might be able to decode them a little bit and at least make educated guesses about them. So I think this question will be great for that. Mm -hmm. But the sentence says the detective's conviction that there were few inept crimes in her district led her to impute some degree of blank to every suspect she studied. Mm -hmm. She thinks there are few inept crimes yeah, so whenever I don't know what the opposite of inept it technically is, maybe it's like competent. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm going with. Like she she's imparting some competence to whoever is a criminal in her area, which I guess you you could start to extrapolate that to like respect, I don't know, things like that. Yeah. And I think something a little comforting about this question this sentence, it says it led her to impute some degree of blank to every suspect. Even if you're not totally sure about the word impute, there are enough other clues. You know, she th- she thinks of them as the opposite of inept. Right. Yeah, I, I definitely don't actually know the definition of impute, but it's just it's uh, the you know, it's very similar to like imply and a bunch of other words that are sort of start similarly. So that was why I made the guess. Like you said, the context clues. Great. All right. So she thinks. She, she thinks that they're pretty smart uh, co- or competent, as you said. So as you hear the choices, going back to positive versus negative again, toss out ones that, that appear to be almost maybe insulting the criminals instead of, instead of you know, praising their competence in a sense. Um, right. Or, or something that, that was more negative. Po- that's, that's negative versus positive, right. Yeah. So the first answer is deceit. Mm-hmm. Then acumen. Mm-hmm. Duplicity. Mm. shrewdness evasiveness equivocation oh that's this is a tough one i see why you chose it yep definitely is i think equivocation is one of the gre's all-time favorite words for whatever reason they seem to they seem to pick that one Um, but did any of them stand out to you as as ones we can toss on the garbage heap here well for me I actually am not super sure on what equivocation means. So this is a good exercise. Um, I, I, you know, e, it starts with EQ. Maybe it has something to do with like equality or something like that. Like one thing being similar to the other. Um, 
and so that doesn't really like it seems like the comparison being made is that these people are not inept and being equivalent oh okay it's equivocation and equivalent so it actually i do know the word um so if you know if they're the same as being inept then that's probably doesn't make sense okay so yeah and let's let's dig into it the roots a little bit more um yeah it, it, you don't necessarily have to have taken Latin in your schooling to see some of these because, you know, other Romance languages come from Latin. And so there's some similarities, but you pointed out the equi at the beginning. Great for equal. Mm -hmm. Notice after that, we have, we have the word vocation, um, which has to do with the idea of calling, right? Some people talk about their vocation or their calling in life. And right. the Latin root at the heart of that has to do with voice or or calling. So this word literally means calling things equal, which actually means you're kind of back and forth. If you equivocate, you're you're uncertain and you kind of go one way and then you go the other. But you're right. That's not that's not a description of a very smart criminal. And even if you're not sure of the meaning, you may be able to notice that. Yeah. Yeah. The general the general sort of thrust of it is not really on target with what we were expecting. Yeah. And then I think on the other end, uh, the first answer is deceit. Right. I mean, we think of we think of criminals being deceitful, so that could be tempting in that sense, but probably not in the context. We're talking about their competence, as you said. You could be right. deceitful and incompetent, or deceitful and competent, right? Right. I mean, yeah, that's probably a, a one that a lot of people guess too, just because, like, obviously, criminals are deceitful just in general. Right. But this is not the comparison being made in this sentence. Yeah. It's the peril of background knowledge, right? We can bring things into the test that lead to wrong answers. You, you got to stay focused on the text. Mm -hmm. Did you, did you hear any words in there that did strike you as competent? What are they, can you yeah, I can reread read the remaining one. Sure. The, the four remaining are acumen, duplicity, shrewdness, evasiveness. Yeah, so I think for this one, this one is tricky because basically only two of those are synonym synonyms, I believe, which is acumen and shrewdness. But it's funny because it's using kind of like the second definition of shrewdness. Like shrewd mean literally like someone is like, you know, coy or, you know, sneaky. But shrewd can also mean that someone is kind of clever and smart. Right. So that's kind of where I mean, acumen seems like the closest thing to the straightforward answer. Um, and then the closest synonym I find to that is shrewdness. Duplicity, I don't I don't really quite know that word either. And, and so I'm going to go with sort of the answers that I think I know, <laughs> which it would be curious if that's feedback that if you would advise that to other people or not. Yeah, let me let me circle back to that. But first off, say it's a really important point you made about how word, words have multiple definitions and you right. have to, you have to be aware. I mean, take the word bank, for example, we might be, we might not be talking about the place you deposit your money or the side of a river. It might be banking on something happening and it's a totally different part of speed. Right. You think about like something being smooth, like something being smooth could be like, you know, a pebble or it could be like, you know, Oh, like smooth operator, like someone who's, Someone who's really well. That's from a that's a line from a song. For those who don't know, but it what they what they say when they say smooth operator is meaning like they're very suave, right? So it's like English is English is full of these things, which is really fun for everyone taking these English based tests. But yeah, the the alternate definitions can sometimes be what they're going for, just to kind of mess with you. I think. Yeah. So you're right that shrewdness. We once we home in on that definition of it cleverness that does make sense and you know the meaning of acumen um but that is probably in the like gre word category it's not an everyday word yeah that's totally true so you might pick shrewdness and be doing a little bit of process of elimination on the rest of them you're, you're right acumen is is the other answer evasiveness not quite not the right idea right trying to avoid being caught or something that might be a criminal once again yeah, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good wrong answer though cuz you know, if if they if they were inept, they would get caught. So it is kind of close. Right. Right. So yeah. if you misread the clues and think that she thinks the criminal is inept, then maybe 
that jumps out at you. So finally with duplicity, if we go back to roots again, mm -hmm. it, it is a little bit um, subtle to get there, but that front root is like a duplex. Yeah. Or yeah. Duplication, right? Like it's doubling of things, which doesn't really make sense. Yeah. So there's, there's a doubling, but duplicity actually is, is a synonym here, I think for deceit because it's double in the sense of like double meaning or double mindedness. Mm -hmm. You're, if you're duplicitous, you're actually trying to fool people by saying one thing, but meaning another or being another. So I think de deceit and duplicity line up as our false pair here, while right. shrewdness and acumen, as you said, are our true pair. Um, but I think, you know, takeaway there is it's all is not lost if you have not seen a word before. The, right. There are ways to make educated guesses and really try to dig into your understanding of the roots, possible roots of the word, or does the word even sound positive or negative? Sometimes the sound of it can at least give you a hint. Um, it, it's worth taking a real shot at it rather than kind of throwing up your hands, which is an understandable response in the face of this vocabulary. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, and if it's, if it's something that you really have no clue, what do you, what do you do then? Like if you just really are, are totally lost. On so it. back to your question. So if you're, if you're totally lost, I think that there actually can be too much of a tendency to answer with words you do know, because if you think about it, just in terms of probability, that word sitting there that you don't, whose definition you don't know, I mean, it has a one in six chance of being, well, one in three chance of being correct, right? Since two out of six are correct. I think that students too often don't choose the weird word out of fear of it. I don't know what that means, so I can't possibly select it. I tend mm -hmm. to tell students, try to eliminate as many of the others as you can, but don't be afraid of the weird word. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's an interesting, it's, it's a tough problem, right? Because you, for instance, if, if I figured out shrewdness, but I'd I didn't know what acumen meant at all, Right. And I was like, well, the root accu, there's accurate, I guess. That doesn't really seem right. So then you're like, okay, well, what's close to shrewdness? I guess duplicity. Right. So it's, it's, it's tough. It's, I mean, these are hard problems. There's certainly no magic bullet on, on that, that kind of question with this sort of vocabulary, but there, there are strategies, there are tools. And, you know, it's a, T taking a standardized test is a probability game um, unless you <laughs> unless you're 170 or bust on the GRE verbal section you know if, unless that's the only thing you're going to accept then you can miss some questions and meet your score goal so you have to kind of think in terms of the lion's share and increasing probability every chance you get right yeah and I mean if you've got one of the answers down that already increases your probability quite a bit right um, because you know the other one's a synonym. Sure. Yeah. Very cool. Any other parting thoughts before we wrap uh, up this episode on sentence completion? Make that prediction. Read the clues and think about think about it in advance. Even covering up the answers is a good good exercise uh, because you'll find that really forces you to read all the context that that you needed to, and it um, will sharpen you as a reader for text completion and sentence equivalence. So. Definitely try to make that prediction in advance. Yeah, great. Thanks so much, Clay. This has been Jiri Snacks, hosted by Tyler from Achievable. You can try our Jiri course for free at achievable.me and use the code podcast to get 10% off at checkout.